Welcome to the one within all to another episode of Interverse. I'm your host, Chance, and I'm going to make up something to you guys. Last week, I spent five minutes introducing the episode, and there was so much to get out. And today, we're going to take it a little easier and bring some levity to everybody's third ears, hopefully, especially in times like now. It might be a little cold, it might be a little wintry where you're at. I'm enjoying a reprieve from all that with a sunny day, and our guest for today is definitely in a nice tropical sunny location. We're going to be talking to Kalina Lux, and she's a friend I made online years back, I guess. Time flies, and I've observed all the many beautiful, amazing things that she shares, and we've uh, connected through different groups that uh, we have a lot of shared interests, and it's just been cool to watch her develop all the many things that she's bringing into fruition mama festing where she's at currently in Costa Rica. So we'll let Kalina tell more of her story when we get started, but uh, there's just so much about her that I'm excited for her to share with the audience uh, as a basically biohacktrist, alchemist, <laughs> just all around like fashionista, everything creative, cool, and bringing more healing, full spectrum healing to humanity. It seems like She's got knowledge about it. She's sharing knowledge about it, and she's working on real-world solutions to help you ultimately have the most sovereignty possible. So I wanted to expose you guys to this awesome human, and I'm glad that we're going to be doing it. And so Kalina's calling in from the jungle. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast, Kalina. Thanks for finally catching up with me on here. I've been wanting to do it for ages. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, it's been a couple of years that we've been talking about doing this. And I just wanted to write one little tiny correction in the manuscript. (laughs) I'm in Puerto Rico. I always mix up Puerto Rico and Costa Rica. I'm so sorry. I did that three times today in my mind. Once I decide I have it right, I just stop thinking. Sorry about that. (laughs) No, it's all good. You know, it's a common. Everybody does that. They're like, oh, yeah, you're in Costa Rica, which... um. They got a kind of a similar vibe. I think Costa Rica is definitely a lot more uh, spiritual, but Puerto Rico is up and coming, let me tell you. Yeah, so let's just kick off with that. I know that you came from a very different type of jungle, the concrete kind, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So I relocated here from San Diego uh, right after they installed a 5D tower. Um like 50 feet from where I was sleeping. And I I was never going to leave because it was the most perfect little spot in San Diego, like right on the coast, freshly remodeled. I had negotiated the rent price down. Uh, it was amazing. But they installed like a universal uh, 5G tower near me where I slept and worked. And I got Bell's palsy on the left side of my face within a few months. My mom thought I'd had a stroke, like the whole side of my face was sagging. And I was like, okay, universe, I want to go back to nature, back to God, back to, you know, the real, like the substance of earth. I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I put in my 30 day notice and poof, the next day, literally the next day, I got an opportunity to move here um, and work towards opening my detox and healing retreats, which uh, I'm on course to do. Um, sometimes this summer. That's so crazy. I actually didn't know that it totally manifested that dramatically for you. I knew that you had that 5G tower kicking the pants to get out of there. And that was before, I mean, that was in the infancy of people even sharing information about 5G. That's the thing. This infrastructure has been going up in certain places a long time ago. And I just find it interesting that I recall last year, one of the symptoms of the reactions to the, what do you want to call it, shrapnel in the arm that they do for people when they were talking about the <laughs> testing. They said facial paralysis was a possible side effect. And I'm just like, man, there's so much cross wires about like, does 5G have something to do with what we're seeing happening to people right now? Because it seems like the ones that are suffering the most with whatever's going on on the dimension it, are the ones that have the weakest field. And that's really hard to detect for people that are completely densely material in their orientation uh, to even notice that type of pattern. But that's what I see. The strong field people are not getting sick at all, or at the very least, if they do, they can link it back to something that they did that, you know, 
where they leaked their energy uh, for some reason and then got you know vulnerable. But let's talk about that. I think that like field health, arc health, I think that's sort of the vibrant thing that you project <laughs> overall total field uh, coherence is what I would call it. Thank you. You know, that's one of my, like, my utmost, I feel, missions in this life um, is to help people really understand that every physical symptom that we perceive, if illness, injury, it all stems from problems in our mental health and our emotional health. Um, once upon a time, I was taking courses with Alberto Violdo, who had gone and studied with the Incan elders for 30 years to learn their shamanic practices even though he's a medical anthropologist. Um, and he taught us that if you want to heal the physical body, according to their philosophy, you would go to um, the emotional body. And if you want to heal the emotional body, you would go to the mental body. If you wanted to heal the mental body, you would go to um, the soul. And if you wanted to heal the soul, you would go to the spirit. So you can't ever do healing at the same level that the problem is presenting. So if you're having like a third dimensional physical pain, ailment, Ill, uh, ailment or illness, you would actually have to start looking in the mind and in the emotions. And so it's kind of like the alchemy, right? As above, so below. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Our fields are the strength of our fields are always determined by the coherence in our mind, heart, um, and thought. That's definitely how I see it too. And I just know from personal experience that the way that I've, I've had injuries from being an active, you know, athletic guy, climbing, lifting, stuff like that, where uh, the injury just did not get better until I addressed the energy body. And <laughs> Qigong is usually how I come at that. But it's amazing because you're kind of told to just like rest things and let, let it heal or put... <laughs> something swelling up in your body. Okay. Put ice on it to try to stop the body from doing what it, it thinks it needs to do to help the problem. It's like at every turn mm -hmm. we're trained to do the opposite of what the body actually wants. Like sometimes that pain is because your body wants you to work out something that's stuck in there, wants motion, not, you know, further stagnancy and uh, what's the word atrophy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think that they're always like the signals that we're feeling that we might be uncomfortable with in the body is actually the very thing. It's like a guide, right? Like, um, what are those things called? Like when you are testing cars, like a diagnostic manual, kind of like, I look at it like a diagnostic. If, if my body is out, you know, in the lower back on the left side, I actually, which I have that injury a lot, so I can talk on that. Um, I know why you know i know what it is i know why i'm feeling it i can probably correlate it to a situation in my life and i know that it's not going to go away until i fix like the root emotion corresponding to that so that's one of the things i've been doing over the last 12 years is <laughs> kind of referencing every single little ailment and pain in my body and everybody around me which i'm sure is real popular <laughs> with all the homies um yeah, like when they're like, oh, man, I hurt my toe. The first thing I'll do is like go look it up and secretly know that they're having uh, a lot of fear about the details of the future. <laughs> the, there really is an anatomy to the biofield like that. And one of my very favorite people in the world, Eileen Day McCusick, uh, as I call her, the tuning fork lady. She just published a new mm -hmm. book. Her first book was phenomenal. It's from several years back now, but she talked about the biofield anatomy, working in the six foot field around people using tuning forks. And she was able to describe like what parts of the field and on what side pertain to what types of stuck energy, what type of emotion, what type, when it happened to the person, if it's trauma based. And uh, her newest book just expands on that with all the experience of the thousands of people since she wrote the first book who she's trained to work in the biofield and man it's just unbelievable like i'll have i'll start to have a stiffness and a pain in like my left shoulder for example and uh it won't go away for three or four days and then <laughs> i look into like okay what's that in the biofield left shoulder sadness and uh kind of disappointment or like let down expectations and then i can go okay well yeah i have been victimizing myself through my expectations in 
this or that, you know, relationship with whoever or situation that I want to be different and not accept how it is. And then I can just like change the belief that I have that I need it to be that way or I'll be sad or I can continue having a pain in my left shoulder. And it's just like, once you know that it's like, it's a lot easier to just, okay, okay. I'm going to flip the switch. Totally. Yeah. It, it's amazing. It's one of my favorite hacks because really it's the easiest thing to heal your body. You just check yourself. Okay. What am I, what's this really mean? And then you can resolve it. And oftentimes like I'll tell the people that I'm working with, like you can't expect to heal something on the third dimension if you haven't done it already in like the mental emotional dimensions, which I would call like the five dimension, the fifth dimension. Um, and because when you feel it on that level with your thoughts and your emotions, it's instant. But, you know, 3D moves a little slower. So sometimes, you know, it'll take a tiny bit for it to kick in or, you know, you might find like a corresponding medicine or not medicine, like actual, you know, like pharmaceutical, but medicine, like true medicine uh, that will heal that. Uh, in the third dimension, but I always think of it as like representative of the work that's already been done. So I like how you, how you have already been working with that. That's super cool. It is a little uh, tricky, right? Because you can use say an herbal spagyric compound to address a problem in the body, but that's like, it depends on what kind of quote unquote medicine we're talking about, like compounds where things are, put together in a way that wouldn't exist in nature. The original word for that is pharmacia or pharmacopoeia or something like that in Greek. And it meant, it meant both medicine or witchcraft. So the idea mm. is like, we need to be really careful about combining things in such a way that might not necessarily work the way it would have worked in nature, because that's where we run into not just the effect we're looking for, but also the side effect. But if you're addressing it on a holistic approach with something that is activating your body's ability to heal itself, not just a symptom repressor. That is a different approach. And there's like, there's some things you can do on the 3d level to uh, help yourself heal. But then you have to still figure out how to hold that higher amount of charge that the uh, medicine helped you get back to. Because if you're not prepared to take responsibility for that level, new level of power, you'll just find a different reason or way to shed it. And it might be in the exact same way that you were shedding it before with whatever the injury was or the emotional hangup was. I think ultimately that's like what's been most present for me in all the things I've been looking at for the last couple, maybe month or two is like, okay, if you want to take your life to a higher level, you have to be able to hold a higher amount of energy in your field. And that means you have to find all the leaks and all the ways that you're willingly shedding that electricity and uh, decide what to do with them. You know, it's not like every scar can be completely smoothed over, but it is about like bringing witness to where the leaks are so that you know when to on purpose, like, okay, got to plug that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And I would even go a step further to say that you can play with all the most highest tech, natural vibrational medicines out there but what I've experienced with me and the people that I've been working with, if you haven't already done the work to heal yourself on the higher dimension, though, those things aren't going to work and be long term. And I feel like you'll only attract in something that makes sense um, on the third dimension after you've done the work and it'll be that match, but you won't even really need it. It'll almost be like a, like a ritual that follows, you know, as above, so below, if that makes sense. It totally does. I mean, I see evidence all the time that something happens on the psychic plane and then takes like two or three days. And then I see it happen in reality. Like a friend of mine, I was going to do a recording with them on Wednesday night. And I just had this strong feeling like, oh, it's not happening tonight, but I am not going to be able to talk to him about it for whatever reason. I just felt like there's no point to messaging him. Like, and then it mentally, I just sort of sent like a ping his way. And I was like, Hey, uh, we'll reschedule this for soon and we'll talk soon. And then this morning I got a message from him and he's like, Hey, my internet got cut by city landscapers and I have been offline. And so I couldn't message you to let you know that we couldn't, that I was not going to be able to do the chat the other day. And I was like, yo, we already talked about it in the astral. And he's like, Oh yeah, I felt that, uh, just was making sure. And so 3d 
the the message caught up in 3D a few days later, but we've both already been on board with the the flow of it. Isn't it such an incredible time to be alive? Like, dude, the the changes that are happening all around us that we're like living in the nineties and stuff, we would never have thought this was possible at this level, right? It would just it's so foreign at that point. But now it's yeah, I can say definitively this last year and also this year has been amongst the best years of my life, even while all the world is attempting to go to shit with all like the, the drama <laughs> and the and the distractions, right? Like how how about you? It seems like you also have kind of been soaring like your your podcast, man. I've been watching your you know, who you've been interviewing and stuff, but you've gotten some really cool vibrations in there. Thank you. Uh, I look at it like we expand in all directions at once. So the challenging things in my life have, feel like they've never been harder, but then like the good things in my life have never been better. So it's like, what thing are you going to focus on? I just look at it like the, uh, <laughs> the challenge rises to meet the opponent. And so I guess if I'm leveling up, then so are the things I'm going to need to alchemize and transmute within myself, bigger, mm-hmm. bigger issues, more ancient ancestral wounds whatever you want to call them but it seems like a good segue to talk about while what has been so great for you over the last couple of years i want to know more about you know okay there's something to be said about not having your not eating your meal before it arrives so you don't have to like project into the future too hard but i'm really curious to know more about your intentions with what you're building and you know what you feel yeah. is good to share right now because this is definitely a crowd that can put some of positive intention and uh, the power of belief towards what you're doing and learn from the example of, you know, leaving a place like San Diego and even while you're sort of wounded by the, the that place, like literally the corruption of that land influenced your field and you had to work with that. So like, I want to know about how you're dealing with or healing through that as corresponded with, what you're building and what it's like to be in the new place that you're in, you know, um, I want to hear all the story <laughs> that you've got that you want to share. Cool. Yeah, definitely. So it, it's really interesting chance, like reflecting on this with you because in, in retrospect, you know, it's easier to see that all of my fears, like my deepest, most intense, fears have come up to just like look at me in the eyes like a snake wanting to attack me and I've had to really face them obviously you know being on the conspiracy train since 2001 um by the way I'll just segue why because it's kind of a cool uh reason why and you can read more about this on one of my Instagram posts but basically uh I joined the air force like out of complete naivety (laughs) at 17 and thought literally, I, I was so like this, the airheaded. I was like, oh my God, we, we evolved beyond war. All we do is deliver food to third world countries. And like the recruiter was just showing me photos of this. And I was just eating it up, like thinking I was joining like the Peace Corps. So this was before September 11th. And before September 11th, uh, I got given a book that described the September 11th attack in clear detail as I'm being a false flag, controlled demolition, and, and it had a bunch of other disclosure style things. And I was like, you know, as an 18 year old now reading this book. Like, before <laughs> September 11th? Yes, before. Before September 11th, a man named Eddie Breslin, wherever you are, thank you, dude, uh, gave me this book and he was like drunk at the BX and was like, don't ever read this book. It'll fuck you up. It'll change your life. And I was like kind of nerdy and like, book? Give me that book. I read the damn book and I was like, what? Well, a few months later, as I was like in tech school in the Air Force, I'm watching the September 11th attack on TV. The base is on lockdown and I'm shocked because you cannot not see controlled demolition once you read about it before. Now, this just shattered my little freaking brain, my like naive brain. I was like, what the fuck? So I started researching like, massively researching 
Um, especially because there were no firewalls back then. There were no, you could just access the back end of any government website in 2001. <laughs> so I was, I had read like the Patriot Act 1 and 2 and a few executive orders. And I was like out there trying to wake the people, which had, as you could guess, like extremely not positive side effects for me in my life. But whatever. But man, so anyways, you've so seen so forward, much of a change on that in the last 19 years. It must be crazy. Oh my God, it's crazy. Like, I've been awake basically trying to warn the people since 2001. And I can't tell you how relieved I am. To the Most of the people I know, and I know a lot of people, think like us now. And I was so alone for so long. Like, wow, thank you. You finally joined. Yes. You know? But as I'm also saying this, it's interesting because we know this world of quantum. So we don't know what actually came first, right? And we don't know enough about the actual construct and the truth of this existence and reality, right? We don't we don't know if we're just inverse, right? And like observing ourselves from the outside in or the inside out. Uh, and, and we don't know enough about that, right? And and I've racked my brain a thousand times, and I've I can tell you I prefer to stay in the mystery because it just keeps it a little bit less. <laughs> real right if you actually end up going there and if let's say you touch truth it, it can be quite quite terrifying right like talking about existential crisis yeah dude so, it burns anyways. everything away <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it would it would just make it like okay not really meaningful i guess and, and i only say this because of a, a tiny experience i had like in a remote little island in the philippines but we won't talk about that but what I will say in regards to, to loop it back into why I started talking about this to begin with, is that this year, this last year and this year, has brought me everything that I have been most scared of. And I'm so grateful for it because, like, you know, I was so conspiracy oriented and I manifested 5G, 50 feet, like, oh, <laughs> San Diego, um, Qualcomm is in San Diego. So they were one of the first people to launch because they were testing it, you know, and I attracted that power right to me <laughs> with that experience. Uh, and then I got the face thought. And then again, here at the beginning of the year, they installed 5G right when, you know, the whole lockdown started like 200 feet from the house on the, the beach house house. Uh, and I was getting all kinds of symptoms, freaking out. Luckily, it allowed me to research some really easy, you know, virtually free um, ways to mitigate all that stress that doesn't require <laughs> expensive technology that's inaccessible to people. So that was one of my gifts, right? I got to overcome my fear of 5G because why I know I can protect myself <laughs> free for free virtually. Um, Two, you know, I got to face my fear of, I like how you put it, shrapnel being infected into your, into your veins. That was like, oh. Yeah, the military Ooh. you served would have called, gave you a purple heart for that. But if you're a, a civilian, it keeps you safe and it's effective. Right, right. Well, it's interesting because in the military, I actually protested the anthrax shot for the exact reasons that they didn't have enough data. And like I stood up in front of the whole, like the whole squadron and was like, excuse me, um, how many years of research do you have? Like when was this, when was the anthrax vaccine developed? And he was like, oh, it was four years ago, like the doctor. And, and I was like, okay, so you're telling me you have four years of data. And <laughs> like, I think I got kind of, they tried to play it off, right? Because they were like, oh shit, this girl just got us. And they didn't really like girls at that time, let me tell you. <laughs> but yeah. So it's funny because I think I had a wound from that left over that I got to rehash out and face again with the potential of forced vaccines facing me yet again. Uh, and, and I got to overcome that. So, uh, yeah, it's just been an amazing year. And the more and more I've cleared out these wounds and claimed back my true power, my not like the woo-woo love and light power, but my true power, knowing that even if they held me down and forced back me, I know I could transmute that because that's not in alignment with my will, you know? So the more and more that I've transmuted, I've been gifted <laughs> these amazing things and opportunities by the universe. 
uh, mostly in the form of Templos Aquaria, my, my new property with, you know, three private waterfalls up in the mountains with no 5 d fresh spring water that's never been touched by chemicals um, up there alone so that I can offer these healing retreats to people, you know, that I love and care about like you guys. So that's my biggest blessing that I received from this year. I'm so happy to hear that perspective that you can't, there's no reason to be afraid. Like, first of all, if we're source, how do you add anything to something that's already everything? And I mean this, like I looked into the PCR test because polymerase chain reaction is one of the most obvious points that if any, anyone with like any level of not double think left in them of regular thinking could see like, okay, PCR is not a diagnostic tool. The guy who made it said so, but I wanted to look, you know, I've heard people saying that, but I wanted to look into what he said about PCR and this guy, he's clearly, you know, rest in peace. Interestingly, he died out of nowhere um, like a month before all of this broke out, but he was a really fascinating guy. He didn't speak the way that someone who's trying to come across as a good speaker would speak. He was like a, an individual and a, a deep, deeply wise individual about the body. Uh, he had to be, to be able to do what he was doing. And when he talked about PCR on this interview that I saw him from many years back, he said that it's kind of like the Buddhist idea that the entire ocean is contained in each drop. And when you take a little piece of genetic material tiny, tiny, tiny piece of genetic material from a body and you amplify it so it attempts to double what's there repeatedly and double it and double it. After enough cycles of this process, there will actually be in that sample some some representative of everything that's in the body practically. Everything. And so that's also how they're determining, of course, whether or not someone's got the so-called virus. But to me, that's proof of the alchemy the power of the alchemy inside you that whatever they're putting in you is not, is something that's already in you. So just do what is needed to be done with that thing. And you have that sovereign power, but we have to really accept that the body is not uh, a vehicle that we're riding in and trying to figure out how to control. It's an extension of our will. It is us. There's not like this mind body separation in truth, these are just abstract concepts to help us understand what dimension to approach from in our perspective, what angle to come at it from. Because we're coming towards the middle in each each one of these attempts to uh, integrate something that's stuck outside our field that should be moved into our core. Because that's what it all is. It's like externalizing a big part of our power, putting it outside of our field. That's going to be the scary doctor or the bad boyfriend or the uh, even just feeling that you're being watched all the time or the voice that you can't stop hearing in your head. There's like so many ways it could manifest, but it's all just this shard of yourself that you've put outside yourself, given power over you so that you can play master and slave instead of being the sovereign of your reality <laughs> or in alignment with what is sovereign, which is truth itself, which is source, which is all things in their totality which is what we are. So like, that's just super inspiring the way that you alchemize that fear of even a forced, you know, still, of course, don't let somebody put something in you avoid that if you can. But <laughs> right. this is exactly why if, with the idea of depopulation, there's no attempt to like actually come in and exterminate all the people with the, the tanks and the guns. It all has to be done through contract. It has to be done voluntarily. We, we alchemize our own de-evolution in a way. It's it's definitely what goes on. You know, I really couldn't have said it better myself. Well put. Um, I resonate with all of that completely. And, and it just goes back to this whole concept, right, that the body and the biofield is really what informs the rest of it. Because, like, we don't have proof that we're not living in a gigantic, you know, hollow fractographic universe. So if we don't even know that, then we can know our own experiences. And, and one thing that I've been fortunate to do is kind of keep track of my thoughts since about I don't know 15 I started really kind of noticing my thoughts and how they were creating my reality and it was so curious to me I was like I don't understand why everything I think about comes true like down to the, the minutia 
um, obviously much later, um, the secret came out and I was like, dude, this explains it. Um, but you're totally right. And because of my will, I'm already reinforming it. Even if they tried to hold me down, of course, yeah, I would never like, I would never let anybody put anything in my body. I worked so hard to detox and keep this temple pristine, like no thanks. Um, but if they forced me against my will, it wouldn't make sense because it would just transmute into my field because my field and the power of my will supersedes and will instruct anything in me to form, to disassemble and reform according to my photonic code. So yeah, I completely agree. Wow. That's so awesome. This is like the empowering ideas that I crave in conversation. And I do think <laughs> that just nails it, but it makes me wonder about the concept of the, uh, you know, the MRNA thing to modify someone's expression so that I guess theoretically the reason it's effective is because then when they do PCR on the person's sample, they don't get the one specific RNA strand that they call this disease. But that makes you wonder, like, is there really an attempt being made there on a fractal sense, to, like remove something from the fractal by removing it from as many people as possible on the 3D level? And what is the thing that they're trying to get rid of in people? Corona, which is the crown which is the will. Right. So like, to me, it's like, okay, this is alchemy. This is definitely a big black magic ritual. It's all right there. If this is the perspective you're looking at it from, it makes a lot more sense than that. This is all just a bunch of random accidents occurring and people behaving because they're just following authority. Like there's something else going on, but people it's symbolic of the fact that people have up till now wanted to, relinquish their responsibility for for that crown <laughs> for that uh you know for their own fields and stuff like i'm they, they want to be somebody else's property you have to be told what to do mm -hmm. and we've all been there like when when are we going to start asking ourselves what is the right thing to do isn't that what a conscience is yeah, you know, I think that that perspective is absolutely applicable um, in the realm of duality, aka 3D, right? Because there is this whole, you know, it's seemingly like a, a polar opposites and this war sensation. I like to take things a little bit, like I like to zoom above and get a bird's eye perspective. And when I look at things from this place of a little bit more clarity and truth from my own personal experience, like drawing on my personal experiences, with the zero point, um, I would say that it, it's done in service to us. And I'll tell you why. I think that it's an initiation. I think that this universe is so much about free will. And I really get a feeling like I don't have any facts or books where I found this from. It's just, you know, tapping into the truth and the essence of source within me. And what I would say is that I believe what's happening here is like an initiation and a test and it's actually a gift of free will because we you know as everybody knows we have just crossed and completed you know a cycle of 26,000 years and now we're in a different geometric position in space time with the constellation you know Aquarius and this gives us a total different recoding of our biofield um, specific, I mean, and this is like actual, that's actual science, right? If you want to look at the work of Nobel laureate Luc Montagnier and his work as, um, with standing DNA as a standing wave. Fascinating fucking lecture. Um, anyways, so basically, we know that this clock that we've been given in the sky creates um, different orientations and shapes in our biofield. And I think that it's all about who wants to go there and claim their sovereignty. We're given like this, this shit list, this opportunity to either ride the ride again because we don't want to claim our sovereignty and we want to play the game and we want to play the game of, oh, I forgot who I was. Oh, poor me. Oops. I don't have any power. You know, some people, some souls, right? They're really into that because it's such a weird sensation when you, when you really know your source to be powerless <laughs> and it's actually you know not as thrilling so i could see that potentially some souls are getting 
their free will choice to go and play in that world. And they need to have this kind of pet removed because they, they're, they don't want to play as a sovereign. Now, some of us, we were like, dude, nah, <laughs> I'm good. I'm going to sit this one out. Y'all have fun. I rode that ride a few times. I'm going to be on a different ride. And, you know, and those of our, those of, um, those people uh, those get a book that handed to them before 9 11 that tells them 9 11 is about to happen. Those people get that kind of <laughs> experience. <laughs> Here's a shortcut right, right. over. That's what I always describe shamanism as the shaman is someone that looked at the last page of the book before, like way early. They just went and looked at the back. Like, how's this end? <laughs> okay. We're all one. All right. Uh, I know. Right. Oh yeah. Cheated. Totally. Yeah. So a lot of us are getting up that ride, you know, we're like, no, we're going to claim our sovereignty. Cause I remember, oh yeah. Uh, and now we get to go party the rest of our lives, creating whatever the fuck we want. Right. Have you noticed that this year has been, Instant zero point manifestation, like boom, 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 boom. All of my projects that have been in spaces for like the past five years or more are all coming to fruition right now. I can't even keep up with it. <laughs> yeah, it's like that in the sky clock um, last year. I think that's part of what made some of the transformative agendas, great reset type things uh, appealing to do when they were done because. As far as I understand it, the way that Saturn was positioned, I think, had something to do with removing impediments or thing like less resistance for things to be initiated. And it seems like there's always a sky clock correlation if you know what you're looking at. But yeah, uh, I've seen crazy instant manifestations even up till today. <laughs> we didn't even tell the story of your your adventure before we got on. We just jumped right into talking about. All this cool stuff, but uh, last last week I had a project that I was working on. I wanted to do this episode that was the previous episode about the transhuman tarot, and I had all of these slides ready, and I wanted to do it. And then uh, someone hit me up in a message that turned out to be a twenty year tarot practitioner and fellow podcast host, and we collabed the next day, and the project was delivered perfectly with the ideal person even though i was like i don't know who i'm going to do this with maybe i just got to do it alone i'm going to prepare it and then i prepared it and then as soon as it was prepared the uh the flow engaged you know what i mean it's just like that just do the part that you can do now and the part that you don't know how that's going to work out yet you'll when you get to the point where that's the next thing that needs to happen it's going to show up in a way that's probably better than if you had tried to force it yeah, I totally agree. And in fact, that was one of my intentions for, you know, this little connection that we're getting to have today, you know, with my followers and your followers, um, is that because like, I know every person has medicine to offer, you know, the collective or, and, and those people who are in residence and need that medicine, you know, whoever needs your medicine from my group can come to you and vice versa. And so that was one of like my deepest intentions when I was like outside with the iguana <laughs> taking a moment to just like collect the vril from the sun and the grass um yeah and I was like that's what I want like I don't know what our topics are going to be but I've held so much medicine inside me and I kind of tend to keep it to myself like I don't go out there chasing people down like hey take my medicine unless like you happen to be within my close circle of friends and then I'm sorry <laughs> you're gonna get it um but yeah, I, I'm, I'm at a place now where I'm nearly on the cusp of opening up Templos Aquaria, you know, a, a retreat center for people to come in and feel just everything and sit in this most beautiful landscape that I've ever seen in all my travels with private waterfalls, with the most healing water, and just sit there and realize, like, gaze upon the diversity and beauty and perfection of nature and know that that is your microbiome, literally, like your microbiome looks like that, <laughs> even if it's not perfect, quote unquote, like it is, right? So uh, I'm really excited to shift into this year, like this new me of offering more, you know, I've, I've been so good at collecting, collecting, and eating all this data and being selfish with it. Now is like the time to switch, you know? Well, I wouldn't say you're selfish with it. I think compared to the average individual that researches this stuff, you definitely go the extra mile of at least through your social media, making the things that you're researching that you find helpful available to other people. 
you know, who cares if it's on a website or on an Instagram story, if it's there for people to find, that's a, a far cry beyond just taking it in without any, you know, without building something that you can then shape later. So I see what you're doing as a higher level of courage than, than uh, average to share this type of information for so long. <laughs> There's a lot of courage in that. And, you know, the culmination that you're bringing together in 3D space is going to be more valuable than if you had made a thousand YouTube videos or something, you know, mm. not to degrade what you Thank know you. I do or people like me are doing. We just have different paths to take. Like, I, I won't lie. I would love to do something like you're doing with land and be a part of something like that. Maybe not be the the leader of that, but eventually find myself in an environment like that instead of in a, a suburb type environment. Right. But I also know I'm in the right place for myself at this moment. And if I have to get a 5g tower to next to me to spur me to move, then I would, you know, I'm not going to just like stay stuck when it's messing me up, but there's no incomplete projects in, in my sort of dharmic life around here that uh, I, I feel good about being involved with. You know, we can't become so sort of spiritually beyond or bypassed that we purple wash our human family out of our lives completely. You know, there's some, obviously we need healthy boundaries, but I think that the mundane parts of life are as as actually as diverse and as important to life itself as the microbiome, you know, to go back to that metaphor. But you know what we should do while we're still in this part of the show is talk about some of the things that you can currently offer uh, that if someone wanted, how people can connect with you, how my uh, people can link up with you in some way or benefit from all this great shining that you're doing. Yeah, awesome. So one of the, the easiest ways is to watch my Instagram story highlights. Um, I've got like hours and hours of content in form of Instagram stories uh, that you can watch and learn a lot about different things. Um, and of course, if you've got questions, you can message me. I'm always down to talk, provided that I'm not obsessing over my new hobby of crypto, but we'll get into that later. Um, yeah, so that's the easiest way. Um, the second way, I, you know, it's so funny. As I've looked back, you know, reflecting on the things that I've studied and, and perfected myself in, I'm seeing the culmination of it now. And I was always so confused. I'm like, why am I doing all these random things that don't really seem to fit together? But now, as I'm launching Temples Aquarius, it did, right? So, like, I went from, you know, skateboard, snowboard teacher to dance instructor to um, realtor and, you know, biohacker and health coach and all that. Don't stuff forget the Air Force. Thing, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that too. <laughs> that was kind of like the jump start, right? Um, so, you know, now some of my offerings are I am in the soft launch of a blue light blocking skincare line that also um, absorbs, adsorbs heavy metals. And honestly, like when you put this shit on, dude, I'm not going to lie. You actually experience like a tightening effect. Like you look younger and it also has long-term effects too. So it's called Lux Field. And I am about to launch a Kickstarter for that to get it in mass. Um, my other offering is I'm about to be finished with um, a book about holistic real estate, basically applying like shamanic um, principles to how you buy land, right? Like just a technique for calling in and aligning your sole purpose with land and properties, like how I got mine. Just a little segue into that. Um, when I found, okay, so when I moved to the island, I was like, universe, <laughs> I want a little farm, finca is what they're called here, in the mountains with a waterfall. And I was like, man, how are you going to get that? You ain't got no money. You ain't got no, you know, whatever. So I just kind of let it go. And uh, one day I was like watching, I don't know, shit on Tartaria on YouTube or something random like that. And then all of a sudden I'm hearing this like really annoying kind of lame elevator music for like 10 minutes. And I'm around like the house doing chores or, the, you know, washing dishes or something. And I finally go 
to click off this horrible music. And it's got this land, this property with this waterfall that I have been seeing in my visions of what I wanted. <laughs> and um, it's a real estate video ad for this property that I bought. So I called the realtor and she was like, yeah, um, sorry, are you pre-qualified? I'm not going to take you anywhere near that property. <laughs> and I was like, shit, what am I going to do? So long story short, things just shifted for me at a line. I bought the property. I closed on it in October. It had been on the market for 11 months and I got it. And I was meditating up there. And I think that this is the reason why I got it because there were multiple offers. I was meditating before I had actually bought the property up at the property at the river and the rocks, the river, the trees, the land told me you are to open a church here. The church will be based off health, truth, and healing. Um, you, you're you're going to have your members allowed to join for free. The church will offer legal protection against, you know, um, things being injected into you, masks, etc and you'll do detox retreats here and you'll like basically it'll be a platform that serves the people around truth that re frames like our i guess you know before churches are always like oh give me money and you have to go through me to get the source well this is the reverse it puts you as the master it just provides a space for you to go directly to source, like in nature, and it's based off all, off all these things of like detox and healing because there's no 5G, there's no cell phone signal out there. I've got satellite internet, and it's at like 100 kbps, not even mbps, which is insanely maddeningly slow. Um, anyways, so yeah, so my book talks a lot about those kinds of like techniques that you can use to call in your properties and I'm also doing real estate again which is just a means to an end right now just to get more um little houses funded on Templus Aquarius and then yeah that's my baby right now is is that retreat center and getting that all up to speed um I'm in the fastest remodel I've ever done in my life we're <laughs> we're almost ready to launch I'm gonna launch it first as an Airbnb um and then you know call in the right partners to do these retreats with me like primarily I need somebody who's like really good at cooking because <laughs> I ain't gonna cook for y'all <laughs> just saying <laughs> we're either gonna do a fast um where I'm not cooking for you know 18 people or something or I'm gonna hire the right person to to be able to do that so yeah other than that I, I think I've got all those components ready for a retreat so amazing and yeah you definitely don't want to let those people bring their own food that be sneaking in Twinkies or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, I mean, even if they did, they're there to learn how to transmute all the Twinkies that already ate up to that point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's all going to flow. And honestly, the first couple ones I'm going to do are just going to be for, you know, the fam, like the tribe, the you know, the Instagram worldwide tribe, people like us, that we can come there and put on retreats for ourselves. Like each of us offer, whatever our specialty is and share it amongst each other so that we all heal. You know, we all come up together. I'm really also impressed with the concept because it's so simple, but to give yourself legal protection through a religious organization. I feel like that's the <laughs> most positive way to use a religion I've ever heard of. Yeah. And literally the rocks told me it instructed me. And only when I agreed, did they accept my offer. Insane. Well, it only makes sense to me. Like we are the land. We're an extension of the land. The ability to ask the land a question, it should be as simple as asking your own self and your mind a question and waiting to hear what you think. It's not that it's really not that different. You're connecting to the same apparatus. It's just like or is it your little bubble or your big bubble? <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, it's funny, too, because, like, I didn't really ask. I was just meditating, and then it was just like, excuse me, to let me know. And I was like, whoa, 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 yes. Guess what? Later, like a month later, um, I was introduced to this church. Uh, gosh, what are they called? Oh, man, they were recently, like, arrested, taken, like, trying to, like, um, defame them and stuff. Or, oh, what are they called? 
it's the church of um, MMS. Like, have you heard of MMS? I don't think so. With Jim Hubble. Um, he actually created his church to protect his sacrament, quote unquote, which is the organic precursor to hydroxychloroquine. I'm trying to like mumble so that that doesn't get you, <laughs> um, whatever. But anyways, it's the precursor to that. It's the organic natural version. And he discovered it while he was working for the American Cross, healing people from malaria with this, like amazingly. Basically, it's just a very high level oxidator that you can make for like pennies or even, you know, by yourself. And I was looking at their church. What are they? Oh, they're called Genesis 2 church. And they have, um, they have that exact model almost verbatim. They don't include masks, but they include all the other things. So I've been trying to contact them to research and like link up with them in a way because I also like their products. It, it's like, it'll go in and it'll find the most uh, acidic part of you and it'll just oxidize it. It's amazing. Like I'll even do a one day fast with just a little bit of CDS on the hour, every hour. Uh, and it, it'll like decrease inflammation, restore. It just it does a lot of real, great things so far. So I'm definitely going to be working with that in my retreat. But um, yeah, if anybody knows how to get a hold of Jim hum- Humble or uh, any of his family members, because I've heard they're all in prison. <laughs> uh yeah connect me let me know wow you know of course i've heard of that uh medicine before because of all the hubbub about it last year but i only just recently came to a new level of understanding about oxidation as far as foods that are antioxidators or whatever antioxidants <laughs> wrong word <laughs> okay so what what it is is that pH is charge. It's like the same thing. And uh, yin and yang exist in a bunch of different ways, right? And whenever you're using an antioxidant or eating something that's an antioxidant, what I understand that it's doing is giving, literally like giving electrons to one that's to cells and to parts of the body that are in a discharge or negative charge. They're lacking electrons. So... It from what I I guess if this medicine works that way if it's a super powerful version of that then maybe it's just giving people an electricity boost and it would just heal help their field have a more coherent template so that the body would emerge different <laughs> in the next the moments yeah. that follow you know because that's what it is the body is just like following this energetic template and the coherence of our electrical charge through the system you know. There's a, it's really crazy, but your cells need like a hundred millivolt charge to transmit information around. Like that's the baseline charge. There's all these sort of uh, thresholds that if you're not quite up to that level of energy, then things are going to come, they're going to fray. The connections are going to be bad. There's static in the signal. And yeah, that's your whole, that's your whole light body. That's the the whole fractal for you is now going to come through that way. Mm, great point. Yeah, I didn't know that about the charges. Yeah, this one's just a piece of it different. It's not an antioxidant. It's an oxidizer. So basically, it floods whatever is super, super acidic with um, a bunch of oxygen, and it kind of just rusts it, you know, for lack of better words. It just kind of rusts it, and it, it decomposes whatever is there. It breaks it down, and, and nothing can exist. So any kind of, like, parasites um harmful bacteria anything like that i'll just just get rid of it well so that's like the opposite version of what i was describing but it's still like the sometimes that's the direction you need to come from to balance right Mm -hmm. maybe it's it's uh i don't know how the charge works but it's like either we are lacking uh we're either unbalanced the, the negative polarity or the positive polarity and we really just need to have our strength brought into our core. That's sort of the baseline of sovereignty for sure. Yeah, totally. You know, and and sovereignty also, let's just talk about sovereignty because like, you know, that's been one of my, my main themes like throughout life. Um, And and I wanted to talk, I, I don't think that our audiences are really connected to what's happening in 
like the old school third dimensional financial systems, right? And and this is something that's been brand new to me because recently I have <laughs> become obsessed, like obsessed with learning about crypto. And, you know, at first I was really not cool with it. I was like, oh, they just want to tip us and whatever, track us and blah, blah, and fuck crypto, fuck digital currencies. Like I'm going back to nature, anarchy, blah, blah, right? And, and that's all good and well. Um, but I didn't fully understand the difference between like a digital currency versus a cryptocurrency in terms of sovereignty. Um, and as we know, right, like we've all known through various means of whether it's just some woo woo channels or QAnon or just our common sense that this world that we knew before, you know, like I guess Dolores Cannon talks about this. I personally never read any of her work, but she talks about the world basically going through mitosis um, and splitting into two different worlds. And for, we're like kind of like in the crossover and some people are going to a different world where potentially they don't get their crown chakra activations. And some of us are going to a world where we get to own and experience our own sovereignty. So in that world, <laughs> the old decaying financial systems of debt-based slavery are fading away. The, the electricity in my head popped when you said that about the crown chakra. It's like, I felt clicks in my head. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, yeah, so, like, in this new world, we're seeing that grip, like, those people that had been parasitically holding on to us. One of the things that I feel like I've been gifted is the opportunity to observe light codes and, and like, like, um, geometric shapes according to different either thoughts or things or even in this case like planetary and what i saw like around 2007 and before was that there, there was a sacred geometry around the earth plane that was more pyramidal and and it was like a different structure and i'm seeing it kind of like switch in and out between the old school pyramidal type shape into Something kind of akin to the flower of life, even though I will say it's actually more E8, if you're familiar with that structure. Um, it's like that. And and what that looks like in terms of like on the fourth dimension, which I would call this level of, of viewing, it looks like a bunch of different nodes kind of equal and spread out controlling the power versus all the power condensed to the top, like the cap of a pyramid with, you know, none of it being shared outward towards the base pyramid. So in this new world that we as sovereigns are going to, the shape is the eight. And those nodes are going to be the power and the influence and abundance. And that's us. So people like you, me, our audiences, right? We're at the, we are at the like forefront of this. And I believe that cryptocurrency is going to be massive in the way that we exchange energy because it's decentralized. It cannot be controlled or regulated. Who are you going to regulate? There, there, it's like, you know, it's um, it's everywhere. You would have to have a global EMP to even kind of slow it down. And still, you could still recover it once you built the systems again, like the computers. Um, and there's nobody to go to to be like, hey, shut it down, right? So it's decentralized, you know, things like Uniswap, this peer-to-peer -peer type of interaction or transaction can really be how we free ourselves from this debt slavery. And I tell you what, man, this year, there's so much potential for each of us to become like millionaires. And I'm really saying it, like I really believe it in my heart. We don't, we don't have a choice anymore to keep ourselves in scarcity paradigm. Why? Because in order to be sovereign, we each need our own private debts. Let's just be real. We need our own private debts. We need people that will shop for us because you know what? I am not going into that world. I like there, there's only so much that our vibration and resonance can handle going downward into that other realm. And sooner or later, there's going to be a big split where we really can't even go there. You know, that world is going away and that's okay. They're going to go play, have fun. <laughs> I'm going to go play over here. Yeah. The immunity um, passport will be that very thing. If there was some sort of, you know, digital identity past that you had to have done certain levels of 
debasing yourself to have access to different services. We might see that. I just think that we should focus on the shape difference that you talked about, because that is, you know, you know, are we going to keep our energy looking at the pyramid focused on the control conspiracy, or are we going to build our own node in this different shape? Exactly. And and that's what I think that a lot of what we saw this last year with all the drama, the QAnon shit, all this silliness, right? I believe it was to keep us looking over there and even keep us, you know, fearful so that we wouldn't discover the massive opportunities we have to create generational wealth and sovereignty through cryptocurrency. I really believe it, man. They've been trying to manipulate the market so much. And it's only a matter of time before we see like global adoption of these things. And most people are going to get shuffled into something that's regulated and centralized, like a digital currency. But those of us that truly understand the framework of what cryptocurrency is, we're going to know how to keep ourselves sovereign and our information private using these systems that I previously was very scared of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I haven't jumped in yet either. I've had all the same hesitations and then, but I keep getting signs. I mean, people I really respect and care about are saying things that, like what you're saying, people that are perfectly uh, reasonable in all other ways. So there, there must be something to it. I mean, decentralization, that is the thing to it. If If it can really be done that way, then that's game over for the old paradigm for sure. You no longer have to have the uh, corporate person between you and every ex- interaction of all uh, life. You know, that's basically what it is. It's putting, putting guardians at every gate is what this sort of inverted Saturnian paradigm we left could remain in a digital way. Like before it was, there was physical guards, you know, guys with guns. Next, it's going to be in the, the inverted Aquarian concept is a technological control grid that is completely consent based, though, because Aquarius is free freedom and sovereignty. So you can you have to consent to go into a deeper level of slavery. And it's always been that way. But it's like this is the lesson of the age for sure. But hey, do you want to tell us more about getting into crypto? Uh, on our members only section for a little while. Sure. Definitely. It's it's whatever you have time for. If you need a break or anything too, that's fine. What, what's your members? Is it different than this call? What's your members only section? Uh, We'll just, you know, we just wrap it up for the call, the first hour. Good. And then we do up to an hour with uh, just the paying supporters. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a Patreon jammy. Okay, well, we'll wrap this up now. Kalina, tell them where to find you online again. Okay, yeah. So the very best place, you guys, <laughs> is just at Kalina underscore luck on Instagram. Um, you can watch my stuff there. And I occasionally put up like links to my YouTube videos that are unlisted. Um, if you write me and ask me, I'll send you them. I don't mind. I just, I don't know. I just don't want to have it all out there just yet, you know, just a little by little. But that's the very best place to do it. Yeah, just give me a follow there. Absolutely should do that, guys, if you're on that platform. And it's worth making an account just to be able to see some of the amazing information she puts in her stories. And definitely someone to keep track of because at the point when this Templus Aquaria opens for people to come return to nature for a little while. That's going to be a very appealing opportunity. I think (laughs) a lot of us have been hoping for opportunities like that, where it's not about, not about everyone conforming to one medicine journey with a leader. It's about coming there and letting yourself return to your own nature in a more deep sense. And, you know, I, I love that. I I've always been skeptical of, everything group think driven. And I know a lot of people that have had benefits from shamanic journeys with groups and with, you know, sh- shamanic practitioners. I'm not saying that's not a, a positive experience or an, a helpful experience for people, but at the end of the day, we got to be our own leaders <laughs> and it's nature. That's actually the 
calling the shots and that's how we can know right and wrong and be more decisive, which we'll is go, is that how nature would do it or not? And then we've got our answer, but yeah, let's wrap up this first hour real quick. And, and uh, thanks for being here. This was really amazing. <laughs> appreciate you. Yeah. Oh my God. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I don't know what it is, but something about today has got me pretty scrambled. It's been difficult to get started on this outro. I mean, there's always some resistance, but today it's been like, I don't know, heavy duty. <laughs> Maybe it's the weather. Very cold, very bleak outside. Not my type of time of year. But really, this conversation about alchemy, what I'm describing right now is a perfect example of why we do need to be powerful transmuters. <laughs> I'll get into that in a second. I do have the excuse that today or tonight, as of Wednesday, the 10th of February, 2021, when I'm recording this outro, the conversation was a couple days ago. I guess the sun, the new moon, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn are all in Aquarius at the same time, which is pretty gnarly. <laughs> especially considering all the age of Aquarius signs that there appear to have been as we transitioned out of the solstice on the 21st and that huge conjunction alignment. So makes you wonder. I mean, it was such a heavy vibe today. I could not really work on anything that I was supposed to, quote unquote, supposed to be working on. And instead, all I really wanted to do was get through stagnant flows in my personal body and in my living space, like tidying up and exercising, stuff like that. Very flow related. I don't know if that, I mean, Aquarius is air, so I don't know if that really is related, but it's been strange. Uh, I want to talk about this personal alchemy thing because really the idea that the winter is like going to get you down, for example, that is definitely giving away our power. And I mean, it's not that we shouldn't respect the seasons and flow with them. There's definitely a different vibe to each season. And I don't even think I'm down, actually. It's not like the winter's getting me down. It's just like, you know, the energy levels are a, quite different. It does get dark sooner. I think what's important to recognize is, hopefully this segues correctly, but I've been thinking about the idea that nothing is all good or all bad since the all <laughs> contains good and bad, that means all the things within the all would contain good and bad, in a sense, if this is truly the type of fractal that it appears to be, where every point contains all the information of the entire thing. So, what that means for ourselves is that we got to stop looking at situations or people as all one or the other. Very important when it comes to looking at people. Having someone on a pedestal in your mind is bad for them and for you. Just like it's bad for both of you to look down on someone, cast them into the pit, if you will. Demonize them. <laughs> and we got to recognize the good in the bad and the bad in the good. That's what that yin-yang symbol is all about. And so, yeah, there's less energy levels in winter, but what are some good things about it? Well, it's a fresh perspective, seeing all the ice on the tree limbs. It's completely different than when everything's green. All that white. I just painted a large section of my house white, actually. And before it had been this dark poop brown for like five years, and I let that go, and I never liked it, and finally got that flow moving again. So the space feels completely different. I mean, going from dark brown to white. It's a huge difference. Objects stand out more clearly against the background. And maybe that's what winter is good for. In the spring and summer when everything's lush and vibrant and blooming and exploding into life. There's so much green. A lot of us have learned to filter out all the differences and just see it as one continuous blob. I remember one of my most profound consciousness expanded experiences early on in my 20s. I realized that all the green around me wasn't one green. It was all these different shades of lighter and darker green. Depended on the light, how you were looking at it, depended on the type of plant you were considering. But all around me, what I'd been previously 
filtering out, invisible by its proximity, if you will. I've been filtering out the variety of all that foliage around me. I live in Missouri. There's a lot of green around here, a lot of trees on the hills, and it can all blur together. But recognizing that it's all a little different, but it's all green at the same time, it's maybe part of what I'm trying to explain here. Maybe not. <laughs> This might not go down in history as one of my best outros. I mean, I haven't even referenced how great the guest was yet. Just doing this Aquarian energy thing right now, apparently. I guess that is fitting because Kalina's whole venture with her temple is called Templus Aquaria. Or Templus Aquaria? Aquarius? I think it's Aquaria, but you know what I mean. She's on that same wavelength. And yeah, let's just stop looking at something that happened to us. As that, that was the worst thing that ever happened. And there's no good in it. Or even looking at the good things is like, that was the most perfect good time and there was nothing I would have changed. Both are equally harmful. And we might have really worked a long time to reframe our perspective on life or on our memories is like, that was only good. It was all good. Or in the moment of something that we are attached to, we might t lie to ourselves and say, it's all good. It's only good. We might get out of a partnership, relationship with somebody and think about how it was nothing but good times and you miss that. But being realistic, you got to go, well, no, there's some bad times there too. You might look back on a, what you consider a terrible relationship and think it was a waste of my life, pointless, but didn't it step you towards where you are now and isn't that a better place? So there's good and the bad, bad and the good. I think that's a big part of being an efficient alchemist and adept alchemist being able to see both of those things applying them in balance in your own mind and perspective and then that's like 360 degrees of vision that is expanding your consciousness because think about what your vision's like you can only ever see the front of anything the back is shrouded in mystery there's a you only ever see half of anything that you look at it's a real trip so nothingness is always present in everything that it seems like it's apparently there. There's also an aspect of it that is not there, at least for, from perception. And what else is there, really? So, you know, recognize the, the nothingness, the emptiness inside all things. And I think that might go a long way towards that. I mean, it sounds kind of bleak and nihilistic, but it's not. No thingness means that it's not a permanent state of being. It's an unfolding process. It's not a thing. It is what it is right then in that moment. And that moment, what it is, shifts as you circle around it. I don't know. This is like a crazy ramble. <laughs> I should wrap it up. Uh, oh, man. I didn't even pick a song for the outro here. Look at me. I folded my arms. You might not have seen that because there wasn't a video for the main version of this episode. Kalina calling in the from the jungle, after all. It was hopefully the sound quality wasn't. Too bad. I mean, I, I could understand her. Got to do what you got to do when people are in the jungle. And uh, it was worth it to have that chat. If you wanted to hear the second half of the chat, where we got into her experience with crypto and why she thinks it might be a good thing. Oh, this is, man, great job, Chance. This is a great segue. Crypto. I mean, I've avoided getting into it mostly out of sheer laziness to be unwilling to learn how to do something new. Which is crazy. I know coming from me, right? I'm so I'm so awesome and deserving of your praise, but <laughs> I do the same things that everyone else does and the way I excused it to myself was like crypto, it's uh it's digital, it's fake, you know, there's no point to it. It could all come crumbling down. And you know what? All that is still true. But isn't there some good in it? I mean, if somebody like Kalina could use it to fund what she's trying to build. And then once that thing is built, it's there. It doesn't matter if the next currency comes up and that old one goes away. Even if she loses it all, whatever she invested, the physical space has been built. Things will have happened there. And we can't put a price on life unfolding in an optimal, highly potentiated way. So that's how I'm looking at crypto right now. Will I get into it? Maybe. Uh, I mean, probably. Maybe I can't make promises that I don't know I'll keep to myself, but I'm definitely more willing to consider it than I was before this conversation. And I think it has to do with this other realization I've been having this week about, you know, the, 
the yin yang, the good that's in the bad, the bad that's in the good. And you can apply that to so much. Oh yeah, I gotta tell you, if you want to get the second hour, sign up on Patreon, right? Five dollars a month, basically nothing. I mean, maybe some people they would claim that that's a lot, but it depends on where you are. But <laughs> I'm giving you an hour free. It's a lot of work. I love you guys a lot for listening, free or plus, especially plus though, because you're helping me do more of this. Anyway, uh, patreon.com forward slash universe, you get access to the second hour of every episode. It's amazing. There's so many on there, even video versions of those plus extensions. I don't know if everyone knows about that. So you can watch the plus extensions on video through the Patreon app or on the Patreon website, or you can get a, an exclusive RSS feed link to plug into your favorite podcast player. They make it pretty easy now. If you need help with any of those things, just send me a message. I'll direct you to the right instructions. But yeah, get on plus with Patreon. It's worth it. Support what I'm doing here. I'm going to keep doing it for the love of it either way. But more and more of you guys are joining. And it makes me happy because I know there's good stuff in there. Like this conversation on crypto that really put me in a different direction, perspectively can still have all the same opinions and ideas about it that I had before, but now also looking for what is the good in it. And can we use that? <laughs> can we transmute the bad with the good? Who knows? Everything is everything. Anyway, like I said, I didn't figure out what music I'm going to put in the outro yet. But if you trust me that I'll pick something good, I'm just going to let that slide. <laughs> and I'm going to link whatever I picked in the show notes, and I'll put it in the video too, in the outro, you can see multiple places on the website, show notes. Also all the links to Kalina stuff in the description, in the show notes, it's all there. Bada bing, bada boom. And I'm feeling antsy like I need to get out of, in front of this computer. If you couldn't tell, I'm just in a weird mind state today. I would say I'm not myself, but who else could I be? <laughs> but yeah, I love you guys, thanks for listening. Kalina rocked. That was a super fun talk. I'm sure we'll have her back sometime. Maybe with a better connection. Maybe not, though. Jungle's the jungle. And I've got lots of good stuff coming up, as usual. Appreciate all the help you guys have been getting the word out about these shows. And uh, all the help you've been to yourself by pulling yourself out of the, the hole, <laughs> the pit. Or climbing down from the pedestal, if you will. I mean, because we can do either thing. We can even put ourselves on a pedestal. I do this all the time. I'm great. I don't need to change anything. I already changed all these other things. So that means I'm at least better than you. And I got to stop thinking that way. I'll admit that I do it. Uh, it's kind of unconscious, but not really. It's like, I don't know. I just want to stop doing things that in my heart, I know I'm not aligned with and just like pretending like it didn't count. You know? That's the ultimate thing, is that you're always witness to everything about yourself. Anyway, ramble done. I'm out of here. Thanks for listening. You guys are great. Keep being great. Enjoy. Hope you enjoy this freaky, weird Wednesday night as much as I am, and I'll talk to you soon. I'm on a mission. I'm swimming upon a sea. I'm not inhibited. Full permission to be. My intuition is clearer now that I see Beyond the limited condition I receive I'm not my body, I'm consciousness in a shell And yet I'm fully devoted to my disguise Because I know that the carcass in which I dwell Is what affords me these eyes I'm not a boat, I'm not a car, I'm not a residence Though I am grateful for the vessels I've inhabited I'm not about to go and cry myself a ripper Every time I lose a jacket in an accident No I mean, I'm thankful for my jackets, man, don't get me wrong. They kept me warm when I was cast into the freezing cold. But a composer is a master of a many song, and every song is an amalgam of a many note. So if you're able to hold on to it or let it go, and feel accomplishment regardless of the outcome, then what essentially occurs is you become a part of something that is magical and awesome. Um, 
winning and losing your definitions the mind creates are you in prison or president of your laundry list i feel amazed at the ways in which we've created situations where both options are a pile of shit uh, what of the opposite homie you're holding on to it not in ways this powerful purposeful pure or positive why don't you drop it and see what happens upon a crash and i'm not talking tyler durden dude don't crash a car i'm saying crash the box the endless possibilities you've kidnapped and incarcerated are uh, hiding in because if you shine the light within the closet then the monster will most likely disappear uh, don't be a victim to the parts of you that listen to the silly little bitchiness of fear uh, and once again come on just use some fucking common sense it's not like you should wrestle with a bear obviously there are things in life of which it's good to be admittedly legitimately scared so ask yourself if the thing you struggle with is that or if it's something where you're visually impaired uh, and try an alternate set of spectacles out a bit Maybe you are being unfair Maybe there's a part of you that's overly dependent On the tendency to pester and compare uh, and There I said it, I edited it before But notice when I withheld that a part of me was ignored When I'm authentic and not so apologetic I notice I start to feel less bored uh, So over water or land or under the ground it goes Everything's gonna be fine there is something guiding you that's deeper than the weekly news Something that is deeper than your mind There's an intelligence that's breathing you and leading you Revealing what you're truly here to find Something is intrinsically limitless and ridiculously pivotal When this shit aligns uh, I feel it forming, the feathers falling together The fear and loathing dissolving and morphing into a betterness I feel a story composing itself and growing In the molten flowing cauldron of the emptiness uh, I feel the ember that is burning and supporting this Even when it seems unseen There is an impending metamorphosis engulfing us We are calling in a new dream